Welcome to Free Media Free Minds. Free Media Free Minds is a show that explores media freedom, diversity, and access to information. My name is Pumiz Amtegazi. And I'm Helga Janssen Daubia. The Constitution guarantees that you and I have the right to access media, be involved in media, produce media. Today, we look at how people are represented in the media. And is that representation going away towards building the diversity in our society and building our democracy? We ask, is your story, is my story being told by the media? Joining us on the panel, we have Nadia Senga, who is a feminist and researcher and a writer from this Human Sciences Research Council. Welcome, Nadia. And then next to her, we have Josh Okada, who is a media researcher and a consultant. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. And next to him, we have Nadine Klute, who is an activist and an independent filmmaker. Welcome, Nadine. Thanks. Before we talk, let's look at a clip produced by Crystal Audison and Desiree Lewis on representations of women in the media. It's been so difficult to separate the fact of violence from the way that it's represented. So I think so many South Africans have this impression that, for example, black women are always victimized. They're always suffering in relation to HIV AIDS or black lesbians are always kind of beaten up. So it's a very one-sided image of women and of course women, however marginalized they are, are always struggling. There are two sides. So there are ways of capturing violence without playing into this sensationalist imaging all the time. And the donors love it. I'm convinced that you know, donors need that image of victimization. Um, okay, I think, you know, as a journalist, and I actually work in mainstream media, in television and radio, it's, it's a challenge, and um, because for me it's about using, having an insider-outsider approach, using a mainstream avenue to get marginalized voices, um, to get um, issues that will, won't be reported necessarily in newspapers, to get it on. And so every year in South Africa we have 16 days of activism, which has become a month. So this is the big space where all organizations have um, marches, violence against women marches, um, you know, you just have a myriad of activities throughout this month. And so what do organizations do? And I'm also involved in organizations that are um, working with um, women that have been affected by violence against women. So of course this is their moment to raise awareness, to get their story out and to get publicity. And so what do you do? So usually, um, and I help obviously the organizations with strategy, but of course I'm an insider with in the media as well. So what we find is, you know, journalists come and I've in the past, I've also done it, you know, it's why you want to do a story. So we want a rape victim or a rape survivor, you know, but we never think of what does that actually mean for a woman who has been violated to retell her story. So on the one hand, you know, that's what the editor wants, you know, it sort of captures the story of the bigger issue, but we never think of what does it actually mean for this woman to retell her story, um, you know, and so if that if you can't find a case study then it doesn't make the news you know and so you're constantly challenged with it and so um, in the case of say um, Sarki Bartman which is a women's center in Cape Town you know um, and for me I'm sensitive and aware of it but I'm also a journalist knowing how do we balance this so I you know one would want to firstly ensure that the person is comfortable in telling the story and no use forcing forming it not showing a face not uh, you know showing fingers or hands one eye and also just changing her voice you know if that's you know and so you you have to find different ways for me to tell the story because on the one hand I think we need to raise the issues but we need to be sensitive in how we tell the stories and I think in the South African context as Des pointed out um, you know the post 94 um, apartheid dismantling offered South Africa and offered South Africans black and white men and women the um, kind of reimagination of a different society. What we now, now find is that different society means that for a lot of us as women we can't walk at night um, because it's unsafe. Um, and violence against women, most of the cases and research have found that it's perpetuated by a person you know in the house. Uh, and that's the reality of the post-apartheid South Africa, uh, which is sad and as 
you know, there's pointed out, you know, we then sometimes perpetuate that picture. But what's important to add to that is that women are taking back the streets. So they are telling a different story and therefore I see my role as an insider and outsider to make sense of that story in a different way. Just one quick thing, what I found interesting is even in the documentaries, most of the documentaries that deal with marginalized people, black people, um, even the black filmmakers really reinforce this image of, well, we are suffering. And you'll find very few films, documentary films, that deal with the two sides of the stories. The fact that people are not only suffering, but also struggling and living and having fun and doing the kinds of things that human beings do. And it's interesting that those are the documentaries that don't get screened, so worrying. If you've just joined us, you're watching Free Media, Free Minds, and we're talking representation in the media. Joining us, we have Nadia. Nadia is a, a feminist media researcher involved in analyzing representations of media. Nadia, from what we've seen in the insert, how are women being represented in the media, and black women in particular? Mm. I think um, it's very interesting what Desiree and Crystal were speaking about, uh, representations of women, black people, working class people, um, differently abled people are very often based on the norms that are already existent in society. Okay, explain, what are those norms? Explain that. Well, you. basically those norms are often rooted in ideas of biology or in ideas of religion. So, for example, in various religious discourses, you'll find that women are spoken about in specific ways. Um, women are meant to be carers. They care for people who are ill. Women are meant to be cleaners. They're the ones who do the bulk of domestic work. Women are meant to be wives and mothers primarily. And often those kinds of depictions are represented across various media, particularly mainstream media. Give us some examples. How, how would... <coughs> Um, a black woman mm. using your typology be mm. represented? Well, often black women are, because of the multiple layers of identities um, for black people and for women, and of course class always has to come in because often dominant media representations tend to focus on middle class people and what they think middle class people want mm. and so what we see for black women and it depends on which media we're talking about if we're talking about let's take advertising as an example and advertising is important because it's what we see every day we see it when we drive we see it on tv um, etc when we do see black people um, they're often represented in ways that are very different from how white people are represented. Now, white people are often represented as the norm. That means when we show white people, we show them as, as normal. This is how people are. So whiteness, in other words, is not something that we think about and are critical of. Now, when people, black people are represented, they are often represented as different. I want to... There's this issue about how people are represented in advertising media. Mm. Josh, I want to come to you. Um, Nadia spoke about black women. How are black working class men represented in the media, in advertising? And I can think of many adverts, uh, for example, for alcohol, where if you drink a certain brand of alcohol, you're a black man, you become physically strong. I mean, you know, those kinds of, you, you know what I'm talking about. So how are black men, black working class men represented in the media? You know, I think the question is, are they represented at all? Um, you know, if you look at, first of all, the media models that we follow in this country, they're overwhelmingly influenced by uh, the U.S. model. We consume a lot of media that's produced in the U.S. And in a lot of ways, we are transposing that here. Now, there are certain key differences that we need to take into account. In the U.S., the black population are an overwhelming minority. Mm -hmm. So when you start fighting battles in the U.S. about media representation of other races, particularly blacks, it's a very different ballgame. In this country, the black population are an overwhelming majority, yeah. and yet they are underrepresented. So that tells you the kind of stark difference that we're dealing with here. But I want to give me a, an example. Give, you know, illustrate to our, to our viewers at home. So how would a black man 
despite your, 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 your critique that perhaps we are not, we need to ask, yes. are we being represented? And when they are, how are they being represented? I think the way they're being represented is very dysfunctional. If you look at the big billboards or you look at the advertising, it's normally for flashy cars, it's for alcohol, it's for consumer goods. It's basically saying uh, this is what conspicuous consumption can be. Uh, and typically you see male, black males in those positions. Yeah. If it's something to do with office products or some kind of investment, then you'd see the white male. So back to the so that's issue the norm. of that is the norm, that yes. is the default, that is, the, that is what a man should be doing. But when it comes to leisure, sport, virility, physical prowess, consumption of alcohol, entertainment, then you have the black males represented. As a young filmmaker, what has been your experience in representation as a young South African filmmaker? Well, I think, I think we, are, we are moving towards more people wanting to tell their own story, you know, from their own experiences. Um, but it is a challenge because I have worked on various projects where, um, you know, there are the certain types that get funding and then will get that exposure. And then the others, when, you, when you're trying to do something different, that you, that you struggle. But I think in terms of when I've been to the international markets, they are actually looking for South African or African films and Africa, yeah. Nadine, I want to just ask you if I can just come in there. So mm. you, you, you are out there. What do these international markets, what, are the, what kind of represent, representations do they want to see? Do they want to see a successful um, academic from an urban area that's Africa or do they want to see a rural woman carrying a, 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 a bucket of water? What do they want to see? I think they want to. I think they are looking for things that challenge the stereotype. I think they are sick of the <coughs> NGO type of films that are always coming from from the region. And I was at the Seattle International Film Festival where Hing Pretorius's comedy um, was it uh, Funny for Riz Lobola? Nadine, yes. I need you just to hold that thought because we have to go to an ad oh. break. But hold that thought. <laughs> at home, don't go away. When we come back, we talk media and representation. Minds, uh, where we're discussing representation in media. Yeah, before we broke, Nadine was busy completing a thought yes. about the international market and what it is that they expect in terms of representations of Africans. Yeah, I think one of, one of the things that I've been picking up is that people especially want stories in our own languages. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so many of our films have just been told in English and I think it's time we, because I think telling a story in your own language has its own power attached mm. to it. And, but although our films are breaking borders, there's still a struggle with black filmmakers especially not being represented. I think mo the most popular black filmmakers in the, in, in, you know, breaking borders internationally is maybe Oliver Hermanes and Carlo Matubani that are doing well. And, and so what are these stories? Are, are they able to translate or to, repre to, to show um, all of us? I mean, and I want to just bring mm. this question to Nadi about mm. is the norm a black rural woman or a, um, you know, a working class black man who beats up his wife? Is that the kind of norm? Are those the issues that, that are constantly out there that we get bombarded with? I am not convinced that the depictions that the international world wants of Africa are actually challenging depictions. Mm. I'm not convinced of it. I haven't seen enough of it yet. Um, and having, and I agree with Desiree in the insert earlier when she speaks about even when black filmmakers are making films, the kinds of depictions are these stereotypical ideas of what a black African looks like. Um, black women look a particular way, black men look a particular way, they're not challenging representations and they certainly aren't reflective, I think, of black African people's realities. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. agree with you there and I think it's the type of films that get the exposure because mm. there are people that are telling the, 
you know, the alternative, I'm trying to create those alternative images, but it's the exposure and maybe it's the lack of resources. Yeah. Because also, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because also in, for, for just a simple examples, like, for example, if you want to enter your film into a international film festival now that everything needs to be shot on HD right. and that's money involved with that so if yeah. you are trying to tell an independent story and you have access to various resources you get you might have a wonderful story but it gets cut off because no, let, let, let's give Josh yeah. a, a yeah. chance yeah. Yeah, I, I think we also have to uh, take into account that there's a difference between the independent films uh, which which target a more artsy probably slightly more exposed uh, audience mm -hmm. and you've got the more commercial stuff which tends to uh, attract more money. Uh, the more money that it attracts, the greater the circulation, the more people get to see it. So that is where the stereotypes are getting reinforced. And that is a huge problem. The other thing is, I think the stories about ordinary people, ordinary black people are being told. The problem is we've got pigeonholing. Um, if you look at the structure of media in, 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 in South Africa, where even with the SABC channels, you've got SABC 1, 2, and 3. You've got sh great shows on SABC 1 and 2 that depict your black South African in a very, very normal, non-stereotypical way. They're normal family men, they're normal women doing things, they're women who are going to work and out there in public spaces, but who's watching these? They're being watched by the same people for whom the stereotypes don't need to be broken down. If those shows were being shown on SABC3, then we would be looking at stereotypes being broken down. The audiences of SABC3, for example, would be seeing a different representation of yeah, black males or, or bring in you know, different sexualities. I think a lot of the, the shows on, on, on SABC1 and 2 have got, for example, characters with, with, with sexualities yeah. different from what yeah. we are used to seeing in the media. But the pigeonholing means that those for whom the stereotypes need to be broken down are not seeing it. Okay. Mm. Um, can I come to you, Nadia? Um, what do you think is the impact on the audiences when it comes to this misrepresentation and stereotypes? And yes. I mean, firstly, I don't think that people who watch film or who listen to the radio or consume various forms of media merely just take in what they see. I think people are critical. They take what they want and they take what they need and what works for them and the other stuff they don't take much notice of. However, the media does work very powerfully. Again, because it's everywhere, we don't necessarily see specific instances of how, or we don't remember specific instances of how women or black people are represented all the time. I want to ask, based on what you're saying, give us examples of a, in your opinion, a perfect representation. What would be a perfect Always, or should we not be aiming for perfection? I don't think there is such a thing. I mean, we shouldn't be aiming for perfection. I think we should be aiming for people being able and being given the space to tell their own stories. I think that for me is ideal. Josh, kind of. Josh made reference that SABC 1 and 2, we do in fact have really interesting the beginnings of an alternative depiction. Um, why do you think our, audi our, our audience is really that interested to watch that? Or do they want to go to the, the, the next B-grade movie? Look, um, I think part of the problem is, uh, again, I, I won't call it a problem. Part of the issue is the need for reconciliation and allowing diversity in. Mm -hmm. The same way we have nine official languages, um, we want to have media for everybody. Now, Is that possible? I don't know if it's possible. And, I, and back to your question about what is the ideal what is the ideal representation? I don't think there is an ideal representation. What we should be looking for is as diverse a representation as possible. I mean, you cannot, uh, the same way you cannot ha always have white people being represented in perfect families. You can't have always two-parent families. You cannot have completely functional black males all the time. You need to be able to see that there are black males who are dysfunctional as well as those who are functional. But, but just, and, and it applies across the board. Josh, I have to ask you. Yes. That are we not bombarded with enough images and stories of black male dysfunctionality and the immorality? Don't you think it's time that we do see stories where black men are positively depicted? Yeah. Nadine, you're a, fil um, you're a filmmaker. Oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do black men want to be, to be shown differently in, as good people? I mean, I would, I would think so. And to, but to tell the story of a black hero is very difficult unless it's Mandela. You know, yeah. it's very difficult in this Do country. Do we really think that Mandela is the only hero that we have in our country? Come on. It seems to think that people think so because I, you know, I've also been, 
I've been, for example, I did the documentary on Jetspunga, and I know that the other filmmakers, and I'm, I'm struggling to tell the story of Ashley Creel, for example, and I know that other people are also busy with their own projects, and why are we struggling? Why is it so easy to do, like, like you know, this woman we're talking about, stories of the stereotypes. I don't know if it's because the stereotype is easier to understand, mm. and now when you try and tell the story of a black hero from a working class environment, that that is... I don't know, a bit of a challenge to a uh, potential funder or something. Like. I was still um, a film student. One of our professors said to me, you, you have to um, know yourself before you make a film. Or you have to be aware of yourself be- uh, in terms of how you read um, media because your own ideolo- you have to be consciously aware of your own ideologies before you even make a film. And I think that um, perhaps... That is what we're struggling with as black filmmakers, that we must, uh, you know, what is in our conscience, and maybe there's certain things we have to get over, you know, in order to create the images that we, that, that, are, that are lacking. That, that, yeah. Yeah. If, if I could jump in there. Please um, do. It, it just struck me this morning, uh, I've got an eight-year-old son, and um, one of the projects they had at school was to to draw a clown. You know, they do these coloring in things. And my son is definitely not the only black kid in his class. But he was the only one whose clown was black. Now, that goes back to the issue of what is what is seen as normal, what is the stereotype of the normal in society, and how, and it it goes back to Nadine's point of how how you see yourself. So if there's a certain portrayal that dominates and you're not conscious about it, then when you think you're representing yourself, you may not be representing yourself. But, you know, back to the issue of of portrayals of, for example, black males. We can blame stereotypes, but how deeply embedded are these stereotypes? You know, stereotypes are a normal way for 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 each and every one of us, in the absence of enough information about something, to make sense of the world around us. That's what we do when we don't know that much about about uh, butter. Then we take the little we know and make that the representation of whatever. So the question is, how do we begin to challenge ourselves? to break out of this um, reliance on the stereotype as the norm. Um, Um, Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about, there's always this issue around reality and representation. And I think this issue is very important because we talk about the fact that um, we don't only want representations of white people in suburbs and middle class areas. The problem is that's where white people are located in this country. We can't ignore that. There are very real issues around inequality in our country and on the continent, right? The point is, how do we begin to actually zone in through representation into what white middle classness means and that it's not necessarily normal? Mm. How do we translate what you're saying, Mm. because I think it is crucial, into um, a more digestible Mm. point of activism for me? and for our viewers at home. Mm. Do I not watch SABC3 or do I not pay my TV license or do I support the work of filmmakers like Nadine? Uh, Sorry, just hold the thought, Josh. I'm just wondering, uh, following up to that question, I would ask myself, as an audience, how can I hold the media responsible I think I think uh, to answer to kind of touch on both your yeah. questions I think I think it's it's not just the media because I think we have got a tendency of pinning too much on the media I think what Nadia started to touch on is that there are some very real struggles at a social at an economic level in terms of integration in this society and I think what the media needs to do is portray that honestly I think we need to have our media be honest in its portrayal of our struggles. If there is an issue of 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 underrepresentation of 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 blacks in in certain suburbs, then that is an honest reality in this country. That should be portrayed in our media. We shouldn't um, t- treat our representations in the media as very static. They should be representative of the real struggles in our society. Uh, take the example of the United States of America, where race has been a big big issue uh, for hundreds of years, and there at the point where they deal with that in a very realistic way in the media. The struggles with race are represented in the media. I want to ask Nadine, just to follow up on this issue of race. As a filmmaker, are issues of race and class um, your, your subjects? Do they, do they question? Is it still a big thing? I mean, it's like more than 20 years after democracy. 
And I remember your film, Miss Education. Yeah. Um, Nadine, if our viewers don't know, is the director of an internationally known film called Miss Education on a young girl's struggle with, with getting to school in the community on the Cape Flat. So tell us. Yeah, I think, I think when it comes to talking about uh, issues of race and class that um, you, always, you, you always tended to have that story being told from outsiders coming in and, I, and, and causing that's problematic in a way. And I felt that with, I mean, if you use Miss Education as an example, what I did was interview a young girl and just let her talk. I did not throw any questions. She just spoke about her community. And then what we did was put images over what she had said. And um, I think when, we, when we're doing stories like that, it's very important that people tell it in their own voices. Yeah. And uh, I think that's also a struggle once again. And we're only now coming into an era where um, filmmakers from those communities are telling those stories yeah. or those stories are being told from the inside. From the inside. And, and, and not enough. And not enough. I mean, for example, I am searching for archive material of South Africa, but it's in the UK and it's in the States and it's all over. And, and only now in the last, and you know, probably 20 yeah. years that we are mm. so clearly, telling not, not yeah. You know, you're absolutely right. We have to, the stories have to come from those who live in the communities where they are telling the stories mm. or depicting people from. But the, there's another issue for me and that's around this whole discourse this whole talk around diversity. Mm. We need to be very careful about diversity. I mean, mm. the United States has taken on, Canada mm. has taken on this whole idea of diversity as if everybody is equally diverse within the diversity, yes, yes. for lack of better terms. Everybody is not equal within that diversity. Yeah. Often diversity means that when black people are represented, they have to be re represented according to the norm. And that even happens in films that are told by black filmmakers yeah. who are telling stories within the communities that they emerge from, where they grew up in. So we need to also be very careful where, that when we see yeah. these inserts, or whatever you call them mm. on TV, ads um, and other kinds of depictions of black women, for example, who have made it. Black women who are depicted as having played the game that's not spoken about. Yes. Playing the game, in other words, playing into yeah. um, dominant ideas of whiteness, how you speak, your accent, how you look, etc. That's we, we don't speak about that. So yeah. what we see at the end of the day are these mm. black women being depicted in, in positive ways. And the positivity is about the fact that they represent the white norm. Oh, so we yeah. need to think yeah, through that more carefully. We, we need to start wrapping up. So I want to ask you all your final thoughts on this issue of media and representation because I can see from our body language we can talk forever, <laughs> but we need some final thoughts. What is the most crucial thing that you think that we have um, as a challenge in our society to make our voices heard and to make our constitutional, our constitutional rights real? I know that there is the need for us to move beyond borders, especially filmmakers, in order to survive the industry in this country and on this continent. But I think we need to be very careful about what we give internationally. Mm. We need to make sure that we control what we do in this country and on this continent. Mm. I yeah. guess that's what I So it's say. about control, yeah? I think for me it is for us as a society, before we hold the media accountable to start being honest and comfortable with ourselves. If you and I are not comfortable with seeing a gay couple kissing in front of us, then do not ask the media to portray that because we will not be comfortable about it on the media. So the media represent what we are comfortable with in society. If they come and say to you, this kind of, uh, this kind of show, this kind of depiction is not going to attract advertising, why? Because in society we are not comfortable with seeing these things. So let's ask ourselves the questions before we challenge the media and say, this is all on you. Okay, final thoughts on you, Yeah, I think, I think that um, I just thought of an exhibit that I went to called um, Performing Being Black. And I think there are people that are, are moving towards wanting to see new depictions of, of ourselves. But I think it's about creating the platforms and I think it's about being critical makers and critical um, receivers, like you said. Yeah. You've been watching Free Media, Free Minds. Remember, representation of ourselves the stories that we tell in our media is not only dependent on the media, 
dependent on you and me being active in promoting that. You've been watching Free Media, Free Minds. I'm Helga Janssen. And I'm Pumas Amtegazi. Till we meet again on Free Media, Free, free Minds. Minds. I am ready. We are here. Open to the party.